back, ladies and gentlemen. And today we're going to talk about how to uh, unzip a huge file in Amazon in an Amazon S3 bucket and resize yeah. <laughs> resize its contents and upload the result the resulting contents into another bucket all right so we're going to start off the video like i normally start off by just writing up a um, I'll call it pseudocode, but it's actually the code, but I'll pseudo the command names. Um, so basically what we're going to do is there is a limitation right for, there are limitations, I should say, to uploading uh, and unzipping large files. I did a couple, did some, spent a few moments researching everything, and I found that some people say that you can do it with lambdas. Some people say you can do it in an EC2 container. And so um, what I'm going to do, and we're going to use this same import controller. This import controller is actually a Docker container that runs inside of a Docker Swarm inside of an EC2 container or EC2 instance. And so basically the gist is, is an, a zip file gets uploaded and the zip file contains one to many images and the images have um, are of JP or JPEG extension. Um, and let's just say for all intents and purposes that the zip file is about three or four gigabytes. So we're going to upload, or the example is uploading um, the zip file into an S3 bucket. There are a number of ways to do that. This is not going to actually cover that in this video. We're just going to actually talk about how to deal with it how to deal with that zip file in the S3 bucket, how to pull it, um, and how to iterate over the contents of the S3 uh, of the archive, and then taking the contents and then putting it on a on a, in another um, S3 bucket. So, as I was saying before, there right now there's some limitations with. Um, the actual space on if you wanted to do it, say, in a Lambda. There, I believe it's like 256 or 512 MB. Um, and then there's just some limitations in memory. I mean, if, you know, in a Docker container, for example, if you wanted to take a zip file and unzip it, first of all, you have to download that zip file. Um, the traditional way is to um, save it on a hard drive somewhere or save it to disk, then pull all the path or get the path, pull it into memory and then iterate. One way we can do it today, folks, is what we're going to do is deal with everything in a stream. And so basically the whole gist of what we're going to do today is, is we're going to create a basic client, which is just a interface into the um, function that we're going to actually call to do this process for us. Um, the, the client is going to have an interface um, and the client is just going to have a method called um, it's going to have a method called import photos. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to do everything in a stream. We're not going to write anything on the hard drive. And I actually wanted to show this in a video so that for anyone else that's actually having this problem or may have this a, as a assignment, this could be something that you could check out by way of video and solve the problem. So without any further ado, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to write everything up. So this is what the, this is what we're gonna, this is what it'll look like inside of the client. We're just gonna say service locator. Uh, print. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a couple commands, right? So we're gonna pass, let's just say for all intents and purposes. Right now, we do have an endpoint for this. The endpoint has this object as an import file import file. Um, in this situation, it's actually going to look like this. If you watched the previous video, we were actually using the same object to import a CSV. But in this scenario, we're going to actually use the same object. And there are some 
cloud infrastructure that's been put in place, a Lambda. There's um, the server transport server, or I should say the AWS server, SFTP server that's been created. Um, and that's associated to S3. So when a person uses SFTP, it, an event occurs, the, the event checks the um, extension and the Lambda fires up, takes that event and hands it to this import um, container, this import um, web API on the, uh, on the right uh, endpoint. So in this particular case, it's going to be a zip file. So what we're going to do is we're going to check out this file here. So we're going to just import that. I just want to make sure that that is, we're going to call it the right name, import. So basically this guy is going to have a command that says um, import, let's say, um, uh, get from S3 and resize image, then upload to S3. We're doing this in one command, folks, because we're going to do everything inside of, we're going to use using statements. And the code is still relatively small. Um, and the use case is, is relatively compact enough so that we can do everything inside of one command. And this is command query responsibility CQRS talk for essentially one atomic object that deals specifically with the retrieving of the zip file from S3, resizing the image, and uploading it to another um, S3 bucket. I know that sounds a lot, sounds like a lot of stuff is going to be going on, but because we have a few things, a few uh, other clients that we can utilize inside of the command, it's actually going to be a very, very small command. So, and then the only other thing that we're going to have to do is delete um, archive from S3 bucket. And so we're going to do an invoke, 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 if I could spell async. And then we're going to, and I'm actually coding this out. So basically what I'm going to do, this is essentially the gist of it. And so I'm going to go ahead and create a client. I'm going to create an interface called, I'm going to call this iPhoto import and then inside of photo import what we're going to do is we're going to have a method called and what we're going to do i'll just return void right now um we're going to call it import photos or it's going to call it uh, or i guess if we got the client if we have a if the class itself is called photo import We'll call this, we'll just do run, and then it'll take an import file, file, like so. And let me just check the response object. I'll go ahead and update my references here. And let me check something out. We're gonna do, we'll run this task response just as, just simply to just try to stay Stay in line with how everything is done in this particular project and return a response. So that's essentially the gist of this photo import client. And we're actually going to rename this to photo import client. And like so, we're going to let Visual Studio do the renaming for us like that. And then now we're going to go create a new client. We're going to call it photo client or photo import client like so we're going to go ahead and inherit from iPhoto import client like so I'm going to go back into I'm going to make sure these namespaces are correct I'm going to go here and here and we're going to go back here and hopefully i spelled it correctly 
Like so. We'll take the name. And then I'm going to go ahead and implement the interface. So now we got the we got the client so that we can use it in the IOC container or reference it in the IOC container. We have the concrete version of it. Now we have this run. Essentially, the run is going to take this. I'm going to essentially copy this. The pseudo. Oh, I gotta love the way that the copy paste works, especially when you do control alt. When you press control and alt, by the way, or excuse me, if you could press, if you hold down the alt key on the keyboard and then scroll, it'll actually highlight everything like so, so that you can take and then copy and paste like that. But when you do that, well, it'll actually take the same amount of lines and then paste it on those side on, on, on that uh, on those same amount of lines. So you just got to make sure you got enough space to do that. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get everything set up here. It's going to complain about some references that we don't have set up. OK, now I'm going to go ahead and get all of the references set up for us. And we're gonna get everything synchronized. And like so, as that. Now for these two commands, I actually did this off screen because it actually took a little bit of time. <laughs> Maybe it took me like 20 minutes to get everything together for these two commands, but there are, I do have the commands and I'm actually gonna talk to you guys about it now. So if we go to the commands here, Oh, not there, but here. We got this first command, this get photos. It's called get photo archive from S3, unzip, resize, and save on S3. I like to name my commands exactly what they do. So when you read them from top to bottom, you can actually understand what they mean or what they do. So this one, as it reads, it gets the photo archive from S3. It unzips the archive and then we resize the images and then we save it on a, on a on a another S3 bucket. So I, I got a couple comments at the top so that we can understand what's happening. So in this command, we basically take the stream file from the source bucket, resize the image, write the container or write the contents on the fly back to the destination bucket. The key to this command is it doesn't write anything on the disk. And that will get us past the limitation for the 256.512. You want to be used, you want to create a command, you want to create a function similar to this. You can actually use this to um, inside a Lambda, as long as you understand that for a larger files, they, even though it's not going to actually take the, it's not going to hit the um, um, space limit. It may hit the time frame limit. So if you if you're getting towards 10 gigs, 20 gigs, you may have to bump up the timeout for lambdas. The max that you can bu um, bump up the max for um, Amazon lambdas is 15 minutes. So if your process is actually taking more than 15 minutes, what you might have to do is take and put it inside a service or put it on an EC2 instance or do something else with it altogether. So the other options, like I was saying before, is, is you can take, if it's longer than 15 minutes, if you have these super large files, you can put them in on an EC2 instance. You can take a function similar to this that we're going to review here shortly, put it on an EC2 instance, and it's going to rock like a, it's going to rock like a champ. So here's the, some of, some of the assumptions that I'm making on this. You know, first of all, the first assumption is, is all the images are going to be on the root directory of the archive. So you got a zip file. And it's got everything, all of its images on the root directory. The second um, assumption is that everything is going to be on a particular format. In this particular project, we're looking, we're looking for a JPEG format. Um, and then the, the third assumption is that the file names are going to be the email address per file. So if you got 10 files, each file is the email address. Um, and the reason being, especially if you're doing, if you're going to be using this for to display images for any reason in, in your application, 
If you use things like an email address that's common across all systems, then what you could do is, is you can basically have an S3 bucket that's separate from your persistence engine. And when you display the image on the screen, you just make sure that the whatever key that you're using, it just is, it matches the username or the email address. That way you have new users sign up for your system. Um, the images that you pull from S3 will be based on that email address so that you don't have to do any kind of thinking or unique identifier matching or anything like that. So these are some of the assumptions that I'm making inside of this command. So if we scroll down a little bit, um, this is all, you know, .NET Core, um, AWS, we're using the Amazon S3, um, uh, the Amazon S3 package. And so you basically do a get object request. We're doing a get object and list object request um, simply because we want to list, we want to do a list by a filter, which is the filter on the key just to make sure it exists off of the S3 bucket. You may not want to do that, but I typically like to validate before I try to hit S3 for anything. I just like to make sure that the file exists. So I check to see if the file exists here. So I basically just say, hey, you know, by this filter on this bucket, on this key, I basically say, hey, do I exist? And if it doesn't exist, I throw an exception and I just stop the processing. And if it does exist, what I do is, is I take and read the stream. Now, here's the magic, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, what we want to do is, is we don't want to actually save in anything on the hard drive. So I basically just put it directly into the zip archive. Zip archive is something that you get for free in system.core. Or excuse me, system.io.compression. Um, and so this is the way that you actually pull from S3 in, in as a stream. And then you take that stream and you put it directly into a zip archive. Now you, you know, and as you can see, we're using using so that everything is disposed properly and that you don't get any memory leaks. The, um, so one of the main things that I do is I iterate over the entries on the zip archive. Now, the great thing about using the system.io.compression is, is that you can iterate over the entries without actually opening the stream. It will download it. I mean, it will get the stream but it won't open the individual stream of each image until you want to. So this is a great thing about using the system.io.compression um, namespace and package. And you get that one for free on .NET Core if you go to NuGet um, inside of your project. So I iterate everything. I look at my entries and then I do some magic here again. I Because we're, we're constraining based on a specific type, I basically say, hey, if it doesn't end with JPEG or JPG, then we don't want it. And then the next thing I do is I have a, a library that I developed for specifically for image resizing. Um, and this is a, a um, client that we basically compress the image. And then after we compress the image, we create the key. And again, the key is the email address. And then I take the, um, and this is again, this is still in the streams. And we're still dealing with the streams. I take the stream after I resize it, and then I do an upload to S3. And this is this upload here does multi-part uploads to a particular bucket. The bucket here is a student bucket for this particular project. And then I just make sure I handle each each stream that I create when I compress the image. I just make sure I manage and dispose of that. And it iterates and it will do everything we need for it to do. So we're gonna actually take this. We're going to take this and we're going to go to the client, to the import client, and we're going to let's make sure the namespace on this thing is. Don't actually want this to have this namespace. We're going to do that. And then what we want to do is just the business commands. Then the, there's another command here to delete the photo, uh, to delete the um, archive from the bucket that it exists, uh, the stage bucket, once everything is complete. There were no errors. And basically what we want to do is, is we want to come in here and say, hey, it's essentially the same kind of request. We get this for free off of the, off of the Amazon S3 package. Again, you get that for free on Nougat. Check that out as well, Amazon.S3. And then you get the model namespace as well. We, we're doing the delete object. And again, I'm doing a list object first just to make sure it exists before I try to do a delete. And you know, this is how it looks. So when we do a list, then I do a delete, 
And then I just have a log that says, hey, you know, I deleted and here's my HTTP response code. So we're going to actually use this as well. And I'm going to go in and populate that guy. Let's see, we make sure it has the name space. Let's see, I just want to make sure I have common name spaces here, folks. You might get into that once you get into larger, larger projects. <laughs> you want to make sure that all your namespaces match. So I want to make sure that all of my namespaces match or Rooney. So here we go. I'm going to do that. And then maybe let's do a, we got a high result. So then we just do a wire response, new response. Then I think on my response object, just got some basic stuff. We got messages and data. So basically what I'll do, actually, you know what? Let's go here. Do I have anything for free that I can use? My models, um, messages, okay. Do six there. I'm gonna do it this way. True. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do it this way. Uh, uh, uh. Right. Okay. So success. Okay. Like so. We're gonna turn a new response. True. Right. Otherwise, we're gonna do a new response. We're gonna return. A new response where we say false and then we return the results that messages right like so and that my folks is how you upload a really large file to amazon s3 or actually you pull a really large file down from amazon s3 do some manipulation to the file and then re-upload it to a bucket so until the next time we speak have a good one.